See them fighting for power. Ooh wee, ooh wee, ooh ah. But they know not the hour. Ooh wee, so they be bribing with their guns, spare parts, and running, trying to be little power. Design. Men for producing a lot of different foods like fruits and nuts and leaves we can eat and flowers we can eat. But it's a system mimicking nature and mimicking a natural forest, being a very productive system without pesticides, without fertilizer, without irrigation, with a lot of biodiversity. Those things we can realize even on such a small place as. The one we over there. respect diversity, we respect how nature works. There's been 3.8 billion years of selection uh, on ideas, uh, and I think we can learn from that. So, thank you. Thank you for the work you do, the history does. Thank you for starting food forests, and I, my, my mind is going back to my childhood, where there were more trees on our farms than in the forests. And. Uh, even today, when you fly over Kerala, you don't see the land because the spice gardens are a forest. They planted like a forest with the taller areca nut tree and the coconut tree and the pepper wine climbing up and uh, the cardamom growing next to it, uh, the bananas. And these are amazing, uh, really permanent systems. And when I was studying the Green Revolution to understand why everything went wrong in the 80s, I started to read all the old books to really figure out what, how did we get here. And uh, one of my most inspiring books is Sir Albert Howard's The Agricultural Testament, which is called The Bible of Organic Farming. And Howard's history is fascinating. In 1905, he was sent to India as the Brit British Imperial economic botanist. They didn't have a word for agricultural science in those days. But his job was to introduce chemicals in farming. So I arrived there, and uh, in the land that was given to me to start the institute, I found around farmers' fields fertile, not a pest in the field. So I decided to turn the pests and the peasants into my professors. And when you said learn from nature, learn from indigenous knowledge, you know, you know, that's what he did. For, that's what he did for 10 years, and then eventually he wrote the Agricultural Testament. And in it, there's a para, and I have this permanent debate with my dear friend, Wes Jackson, who's always looking for perennial wheat, and says, agriculture's always been destructive. I say, no, your own guru has this paragraph in here, which says, the, he knows this, this talk of us as the Orient, Farming in the Orient has passed the ultimate test. It is as perennial as the forest, because it was based on the principles of the forest. And the principles of the forest are diversity and what Howard calls the law of return, returning nutrients, returning water back to the soil. So I'm so glad it's happening because for too long have we had the export of poisons and chemicals and monocultures and violence and domination, and I think it's time to give way to the forest. Um, uh, maybe I got more. I'm working in the, in the, in the organic uh, uh, supermarket. Yeah. And when I discuss organic uh, food with people, they always, no, a lot of people pop up the argument, which I call a myth, that organic food is not able to feed the world. 
So what are your what is your opinion about this? Sure. Okay. Yeah. If you we can... st- have we started? Yeah. Okay. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. start it. Yeah. Yeah. In on the basis of both my own work and my research, um, organic through biodiversity is the only way we will feed the world. Because the industrial agriculture actually is very low productivity when you measure it in terms of real output. Uh, After all, it's producing only one commodity. Yes. And if you take corn, I've done these analyses, you might go from four tons to five tons of corn over a hectare, but you will go down from nine tons to five tons and you in terms of food. Okay, okay. Because of yeah. the diversity, which is why I have talked about two terms. Yeah. The monoculture of the mind, which does not yeah. see the diversity. Yes. <laughs> and all sustainable farming systems worldwide have been sustain uh, have been based on diversity. Yes. No. If you look at only one commodity and you see only corn, you'll see more corn. Yes. But you got rid of the beans, you got rid of the pulses, yeah. you got rid of the trees, you got rid of everything else yeah. that feeds people, yeah. most importantly that which feeds the soil. Mm-hmm. The figures are clear, the United Nations has recognized that 75% food comes from small farms. Yes. That are Still. multi multifunctional and biodiverse. Yeah. Still in spite of a century of destruction. Yes. Wow. In spite of the, 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 the power yeah. of the corporation. So, you know, since I'm a physicist and, and like <laughs> numbers, 75% of the food comes from those who use 25% land. 25% food comes uh-huh. from those who use 75% yes. land. Mm. If those who are providing only 25% food using 75% land mm. control 100% of the land, mm. they will bring the food supply to 33%, yes. which yes. means all of the planet is destroyed yeah. and for a little while 33% of humanity is fed. It's an insane equation. Yes. Yeah. So only biodiverse, organic and small. Yes. Not large, small, yeah. not monocultures, biodiverse and not chemical toxic. Mm. When they say intensification, they are referring to intensification of toxics. Intensification of toxics is not more food, it is more poison. It is yes. more poison. Yes, okay. very clear, very okay. clear. I also saw what, once in an interview that you said that uh, the, the, the small uh, farming based on diversity uh, can produce uh, two to five times more than per acre than, than the monoculture. Yes. Our, our measurements, where we don't measure yield, but we measure nutrition per acre. Yes, okay. And, and that's a different kind of measurement. It's different because yeah. yield is of a single crop. Yes. That's Whereas right. nutrition is of everything that grows. Yes. And Forest trees, the, yeah. Yeah. the vegetables, the wild spontaneous plants. And I've done studies, 250 species of wild plants on one farm, yeah. which women know how to use for food yeah. and medicine. Mm-hmm. Yes, maybe that's mm-hmm. an also a good introduction, yes. women, yeah. because what's the what's the connection of women and she she like to to ask you a <laughs> question no. about that. Uh, very much interested in uh, in uh, um, uh, what women the, the 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 power of women of the feminine. Yes. Um, especially now, um, I think it's very important that women just wake up and understand their own power. Sure. But also understand the feminine in totality, that we really need this part, this woman, if we want to stand up, we really need to meet each other and unite that force, because it's the basis in my uh, um, view. Yeah. Can, you, can you tell something about your vision on it? And, and I would ask for you uh, um, to, to call them up, call the ladies up, because I'm, I'm working and trying to, to bring women together so they can remember. Mm-hmm. Please. So the first level at which the feminine is rising and needs mm-hmm. to rise mm-hmm. is the feminine as the creative force yes. of mm-hmm. the universe and the earth. Mm-hmm. Most of our cultures across the world have believed in Mother Earth as a mother. Yes. yes. And uh, it's only in this period of the rise of industrialism and capitalism and colonialism mm-hmm. that the idea of the earth as a mother was destroyed yes. uh, in order to turn the earth into a reservoir of 
resources to be exploited. Mm -hmm. Just iron ore mines or gold mines or forests as timber mines. Uh, and right now we can see Mother Earth is rising. Yes. And saying, you immature and spoiled kids. Yes. You know, you're going too far. <laughs> and every climate disaster, in my view, mm -hmm. is Mother Earth shaking. shaking us up to say, get your act yes. together. Yes. The second level at of women rising is the fact that the destructive system is based on what I have called capitalist patriarchy, the convergence of patriarchal power with the power of capital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the rise, the rising of nature in women is the power of nature, the power of nature. and the power of women. Yes. Not in a silly way of saying, you know, there's genetic essentialism, women are closer to nature. No. 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 We, women have had to do the work that forces us to remember that it is important to care. Yes. Men can also remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in most tribal societies, men and women, you don't know who really brings up the child because the baby moves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, In mm -hmm. traditional society, the man cooks and the woman cooks. It's only in patriarchal societies. Mm -hmm. The things, activities that are vital to human renewal are turned into women's work, yeah. when it should yes. be human work. Yes. Yes. It should be yes. human yes. work. Yes. And in particularly in the field of agriculture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find that if we have to do an agriculture that sustains life, it has to be an agriculture based on women's yes. knowledge, not on the knowledge that has come out of uh, greed. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I got a question about science. For if 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 I watch uh, the 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 world today, I think uh, a Western view on reality or a Western science, if we can, if you may call it science, uh, is forced upon the rest of the world and promoted as objective. But is it really objective, or is it based on uh, on one maybe one culture or one cultural perspective, or maybe? One race, racial perspective of reality, which is being forced on the others. Well, what is called science hmm. has been based on the subjugation of the science of all cultures of the world. Yes. yes. Yeah. yes. But it has also been based on subjugating the science of Europe. Yes. Whether it was the science of Goethe mm -hmm. or the science of women. Mm -hmm. uh, the new science of false objectivity, the new science of false rationality, mm. um, of uh, treat defining nature as dead and man mm -hmm. as conqueror, yeah. Yeah. that science was a very patriarchal science. Yeah. And it required women to be killed as witches. Yeah. 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 And the witch hunts, the colonization, yeah. and the destruction of nature are the three colonizations yeah. that are built into that kind of and science. Maybe also the colonization of the mind. It is the colonization of the mind because mm -hmm. the human mind teaches us to see connections. Okay. Whereas that science yeah. forces us to disconnect. Yes. And at the end of it, after centuries, that mind cannot see the connections. Cannot see it. And yeah. that has become the biggest threat yes. to our existence on the planet, a fragmented mind. Yeah. So yeah. then yeah. how Last do we... Um, or how, what is your experience in reconnecting that within yourself and also within others? Because, like also the example that you use, that when you come to a new country and you find that people do not even make the assumption or do not make the connection of like who you are and what you stand for and the connections between nature and life and, and the diversity of life, and for example, yeah. a big corporation. Um, how do we make that reconnection again yeah. then? Because it's, it's yes. actually an, an internal yeah. process that's, that's struggling within us, even letting go of that in yourself, uh, of what yeah. you've been taught. Well, I think the first connection is to connect to nature. Yeah. And that means recognizing the power yeah. of nature's work. You know? The second is, I believe we have to connect to our mothers both the Mother Earth as well as mm. mothers. Uh, because that connection is a connection of life. We've got to recognize and be great, yeah. grateful for life. 
And the third connection we have to make is ourselves in a highly connected world. That we have to learn from both the social connections of community and the natural connections of the ecological support mm. to know the reality of which we are a part. Mm. Yeah. And if there are in our heads fragmentations and separations, mm -hmm. we have to treat them as psychological problems. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because they are. And, you know, it's sort of, yes, we, are, we become a species that has to undergo psychiatric care and yeah. only yeah. nature can offer it to yeah. us. Yeah. 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 Healing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay. Maybe, yeah, they were already giving the signs, so we, we really like to thank you. We could speak for hours, really, <laughs> really, really, because I'm also I'm also studied in India as a Ayurvedic practitioner, oh, and it is wonderful. also yeah, yes, wonderful. we could speak for hours, but uh, they were already giving the signs. But we're okay. really glad to 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 have that little opportunity and that we uh, are able to 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 give it back to the people we're working with. Uh, thank yes, you. yes, yes. Thank you. Really. Hope that uh, what what is being done because now a, a different kind of knowledge is being created yes. and that, that can be translated for the common the average person and the other people and not that the science is separate like yeah. some of us like don't come from that yeah. but we are busy with the same thing so it's good that we should start to involve everyone thank you, okay. thank you very much uh,